sorry, you guys. I have to start over real quick. You hate living here. Michael looked at the woman speaking to him. No, Aunt Esther, I don't. He said it dully, sliding his milk glass back and forth on the table. I don't hate it here. Esther removed the last pan from the dishwasher and hung it above the oven. You hate it here, she said, and you hate me. I don't, Michael yelled. It's not you. The woman turned to face him in the kitchen. Don't yell at me, she yelled. I'll not, I'll not have it in my home. I can't make you happy, Michael. You just refuse to be happy here, and you punish me for it every day. Punish you? Michael gawked at her. I don't punish you. I don't even care about you. I don't care what you eat or how you dress or where you go or what you think. Can't you just leave me alone? He slammed the glass down and scraped his chair back from the table and ran out the door. Michael! Aunt Esther yelled. They have been living together, the two of them, for six months. Michael's parents had died, and only Esther could take him in, or only she has offered to. Michael's other relatives could not imagine dealing with a 14-year-old boy. They wanted peaceful lives. Esther lived in a condominium in a wealthy section of Detroit. Most of the area's residents were older, like her, and afraid of the world they lived in, like her. They stayed indoors much of the time. They trusted few people. Esther liked living alone. She had never married or had children. She had never lived anywhere but Detroit. She liked her condominium. But she was fiercely loyal to her family, and when her only sister had died, Esther insisted she be allowed to care for Michael. And Michael, afraid of going anywhere else, had accepted. Can anyone tell me what a condominium is? Do you know what it is, James? Like a, like your own place that you created and like a, like a not a hotel, but like a house, mm -hmm. but a small or bigger. Yeah, so it is like a house, but does anyone know why it's different than a house? Do you know why it's different than a house? Do you know, James? Because um, it's, um, it's home. Okay. Not quite. A house you own or you rent. Okay. Most people own a house, but if you um, rent a house, that's like you just pay the landlord, whoever owns the house. What's different about a condominium is you buy it, but you are living in like a um, community kind of Place. Like and people do your lawn, people do your landscaping, people, um, you pay like fees to live in the area and people do those things for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. For an apartment, you rent an apartment, but a condo, like you pay the association fees or what they call, and people do the work for you. It's hard to explain. <laughs> Do you guys get that? Like mm -hmm. what the difference is between a house, an apartment, and a condo? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, he was, oh, he was so lonely. Even six months after their death, he still expected to see his parents sitting on the couch as he walked into Esther's living room, waiting for the bedroom as he came out of the shower, coming in the door late at night. He still smelled like his father's old spice somewhere and his mother's talk. Sometimes he was so he was so sure one of them was somewhere around him that he thought maybe he was going crazy. His heart hurt him. He wondered if he would ever get better. And though he denied it, he did hate Aunt Esther. She was so different from his mother and father. Prejudice. She admired only those who were white and Presbyterian. Selfish. She wouldn't allow him to use her phone. Complaining, she always had a headache or a backache or a stomach ache. He didn't want to, but he hated her, and he didn't know what expect, what to do except to lie about it. Michael hadn't made any friends at his new school, and his teachers barely noticed him. He came home alone every day and usually found Esther on the phone. She kept in close touch with several other women in nearby condominiums. Esther told her friends she didn't understand Michael. She said she knew he must grieve for his parents, but why punish her? 
She said she thought she might even send him away if he couldn't be nicer. She said she didn't, didn't deserve this. But when Michael came in the door, she always quickly changed the subject. One day after school, Michael came home with a hermit crab. He had gone into a pet store looking for some small living thing, and hermit crabs were selling for just a few dollars. He bought one and a bowl. Esther, for a change, was not on the phone when he arrived. She was having tea in a crescent roll and seemed cheerful. Michael wanted badly to show someone what he had bought, so he showed her. Esther surprised him. She picked up the shell and poked the long, shiny nail of her little finger on the crab's claw. Where is she? Or where is he? She asked. Michael showed her the crab's eyes peering through the small opening of the shell. All right. That's all we're going to be reading today. I told you it's much shorter today. Keep it open because we are going to be using the book. And today we are going to be comparing and contrasting characters. So who are the characters in this story? Let's start there. Who are the characters in this story? So far. Who do we know, Colton? Kyle and... Yeah, her name's Funky. Esther. Yeah. You good? So we have Michael and we have Aunt Esther. Um, how do the characters act in similar ways? How do they act in similar ways? What do you think, Brooklyn? Both are lonely. They're both lonely. Okay, we know Aunt Esther lives alone in this condominium. She has friends that live in other condominiums, but they were saying how these people pretty much just stay in their condo and they don't really go out and do things. They're kind of just homebodies. They like to be inside. Okay, and then Michael, obviously, what happened to his parents? They died. They passed away. So Michael was only 14 years old, and so Aunt Esther is the only family member that would take him in. Good. What do we know about these characters so far? What do we know about them? Tell me a little bit about them, James. Um, well, Michael is, um, he both, he lost his parents, and um, Esther uh, lost sister mm -hmm. and uh and well Michael he he, never, he doesn't have any friends at school and he goes to school and and Michael and Esther are both lonely and they both have good why do you think he went and got a hermit crab because he was lonely yeah. he good awesome he was lonely he wanted something to kind of keep him occupied and um something to comfort him and then hermit crabs were just cheap so he said a couple dollars and he brought a hermit crab home perfect um let's talk about where aunt esther lives where does she live where does she live fisher Detroit. okay detroit and what is the area like in detroit where that she where she lives what's the area like Do you think it's a, sorry, what did you say? And lots of other big houses. Good, so um, condominium, lots of big houses. So what does that tell you about the area she lives in? That's where most of the rich people live Good, it's a wealthy community. There's uh, people around her are wealthy. And Michael is not used to the area. Um, and where, or like he's not used to, um, being in such an area. So it's a total different lifestyle he mentioned um, that he lives in now. Um, we are on page where we're going to go to page 32 in our packets. We're on page 32. 